As a competitive figure skater, Danica Ellis Dawson believes that sometimes you just have to keep going, even if things don't go as planned. With her university applications now in, she's determined to start first year in the fall, whether it ends up being online or in person. So the second best scenario, it would kind of just be doing it from home. Like I'd still get to stay at home and spend one more year with my family and all my friends and do skating. And then by the second year, I'd be able to like fully commit to school. She considered taking a gap year to keep skating and start work, but decided against it. Who even knows if I'll be able to get a job and like be able to commit full time, depending if it shuts down again. With application deadlines now over or fast approaching, anyone applying for post-secondary education this winter has some tough choices to make, decisions their parents never had to face. Don't try and relate this to past experiences that you've had because it's just, it's nothing compared to it. That's Mika LeBlanc's message to adults. She got accepted at McGill University back in the fall. But disappointed that all her classes were online, she enrolled only part-time. Adjusting to university life in a virtual setting was tough. Having like no relationship with the teachers or the profs at all and no relationship with any of my classmates and being one of like 600 students in my political science class. And so her mind's made up for next September. If courses are online, she won't go. The organization representing Canadian universities said in a statement, we are all experiencing this pandemic in real time and it is too early to say what the world will look like at the beginning of the next academic year. But many young people aren't holding their breath to find out. Ben Vogels backed out of universities back in September when he learned the courses would be online and he didn't apply for next fall. I work in construction uh, five days a week, all day pretty much. So uh, just keep it on that track and uh, waiting for this to uh, cool down and hopefully get back into physical school. If not, he may pursue a trade among the many young people trying to decide whether to change path or stick to the course first planned as they take their first steps into adult life in the middle of a pandemic. Deanna Sumanak-Johnson, CBC News, Toronto. Okay, so that's how some young Canadians are feeling right now. A lot of uncertainty about what's ahead. So for more on this, let's bring in Behan Farhadi. She's been researching the impact of online learning as a postdoctoral visitor at York University, also a secondary school teacher at the Toronto District School Board. So, so Behan, can you start just by walking us through what your own experiences with students have told you about the range of concerns people are feeling as we approach the, the year mark into this pandemic? What I'm consistently hearing is that students are overwhelmed and they are feeling very, um, you know, pressured to proceed as if business, it was business as usual. And, and there's a variety of ways that they're coping with that. And, and do they have the supports that they need to cope with that? I think part of the supports students need is communication that they are learning during a pandemic and that they don't need to proceed at the pace that they would on a regular year. As it stands, everything uh, this year has kind of been as if it were any other year. There hasn't been adjustments to the amount of curriculum that needs to be covered. And there are just there's so much uncertainty around learning that they're inevitably they're experiencing disruption. Mm. But I guess it also strikes me that that students succeed when when teachers succeed, right? I mean, do they have the supports they need? And and for that matter, what are the supports that they would need in this kind of a situation? The supports teachers need most is the uh, ability to exercise their professional judgment and the 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 tools to do so, and, and that includes virtual tools for for high schools that are um, either hybrid or you know in in many in many parts of of the province learning online entirely and so so what does that what does that look like right because i mean every school is going to be different they're all going to have different different access to to different kinds of resources so so what specifically is it that the teachers would would get that that would be helpful for them i think when teachers hear that students are struggling with court content and they are unable to spend the time necessary to 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 sort of bridge that knowledge because they you know because of the pressure in the day and how much they need to cover because the uh the synchronous mandate 
forces them to have to engage with whole groups for a really long period of time. Mm. It prevents individualized instruction and it, it prevents them from providing the supports. I know students can't even, many students can't access digital books or digital resources. Uh, there's definitely a lack of uh, resources online compared to face-to-face. -to -face. Right. So, so then, uh, sort of if I'm putting myself in the shoes of a, a student, maybe even one making a big decision about my future uh, post-secondary, what is the advice that you would give me in that situation? I think no matter wh what choice students make, they're not going to be alone in making it and and giving um, giving themselves a little grace uh, and and you know permission to to do what's best for them without mm. feeling like they need to conform. Yeah, well, we're certainly all figuring this out at the same time. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that. Thank you.